Okay, so let's have a look at the 2021 Higher Level Maths Paper 1, question 1. Now, this is a complex number type question. So there are a couple of ways of doing this. Um, I'll do it both ways actually. So let's see, if we have uh, this 4 minus 2i over 2 plus 4i, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator over itself first of all. So I've got 2 minus 4i over 2 minus 4i. And we know that that's going to be equal to 0 plus ki. So if we multiply out the top here, we've got 8 minus 16i uh, minus 4i plus 8i squared. On the bottom, we, we end up with 4 minus 8i plus 8i minus 16i squared. And again, that's equal to 0 plus ki. Now if we do the top here we have, let's see, um, we have an 8 and then we have a plus 8i squared. Now i squared is minus 1 so this plus 8i squared just becomes minus 8 so that's a minus 8 plus 8 will just cancel and then on the top we just end up with minus 20i. On the bottom we've got a minus 8i plus 8i which will give us 0 um, and again out here we have i squared which is minus 1 so this is plus 16 plus 4 which gives us 20 so that's 0 plus ki now here we just end up with minus i and that's equal to 0 plus ki now the this is actually 0 minus i if you like so the coefficient of the um, the i's here will be the same. So in other words, minus 1 will be equal to k. And that's our answer. Okay, the other way we could have done this was, let's say, take the 4 minus 2i divided by 2 plus 4i. We know that that's equal to 0 plus ki. We could just simply multiply across by the denominator here. So that'll give us uh, 4 minus 2i is equal to 2 plus 4i times uh, 0 plus ki. Just multiply this out. We've got 4 minus 2i is equal to 0 minus, or sorry, plus uh, 2ki. Uh, again, plus 0 plus uh, 4ki squared. Now let's have a look. We've got 4 minus 2i on the left hand side. On the right hand side, this here becomes, because the i squared is minus 1, that'll become minus 4k. So minus 4k here. And we've got our plus 2ki here as well. Now, left and right hand side are written in the form a plus bi. So we can just equate the uh, real parts, equate the imaginary parts. So what we can say here is that 4 is equal to minus 4k. And we can also say that minus 2i is equal to 2ki. We do, if we do both of those, if we do both of those here, we end up with um, k is equal to minus one here, and also here the coefficients of the i are equal, so minus two is equal to two k, or just um, again k is equal to minus one. So whatever way we did it, we got k is equal to minus one. Okay, so that's part A. Okay, so let's have a look at part B. Now here we have, let's see, we have the square root of minus 5 plus 12i. Now we've got to write that in the form a plus bi. So let's see, what can we do here? Well, what we can do to start with here is just square both sides. So if I square the left hand side, I've got minus 5 plus 12i. On the right hand side, I should end up with, let's see, a squared plus 2aki plus uh, k squared i squared. Okay, so let's put the i's together, the imaginary parts together here on the right hand side and the real parts together. So the left hand side will remain the same, minus 5 plus 12i. This side here, let me see, this, um, this thing here is actually real because the i squared is minus 1. So this is actually minus k squared. So we have a squared minus k squared here. That's our real part. And we've got plus 2aki here. 
Now, both left hand right hand sides are written in the form a plus bi, so we can equate the imaginary and the real parts. So we can say that minus 5 is equal to a squared minus k squared. And we can say 12 is equal to 2ak. So let's, um, let's just work through these. We have uh, two equations, and what we've got to do is just work out what a and k are. So let's do that. <clears throat> I'm going to do this by substitution. So let's take um, this equation here on the right-hand side. Well, I can divide across by 2 anyway, so that'll give me 6 is equal to ak. Let's take a first as equal to 6 over k. Now I can substitute that into the other equation here, so let's do that. So we have minus 5 is equal to, um, now our a is 6 over k, so that's 6 over k, and we're going to square that, and we got our minus k squared here. So let's just work through this. So we have a minus 5 is equal to 6, 6 is 36 over k squared minus k squared here. Let's just multiply across by k squared. So we've got minus 5k squared is equal to 36 minus k to the power of 4. Let's put everything together here on one side. That'll give me k to the power of 4 minus 5k squared minus 36 equal to 0. Now this is just a, effectively a quadratic equation here. We have a k squared squared here. So if we factorize the left hand side that'll give us k squared times k squared here now I want 36 two numbers that'll give me 36 when multiplied and added to give me uh, a 5 so let's see 4 9's will give me 36 and the difference between 4 and 9 is 5 so that should work let me put the 9 here and the 4 here now I want a minus 5 so this is I need a minus here so it has to be plus times minus. Uh, I need the bigger one here to be minus, so I'm going to put the minus here and the plus here. That should work. That'll give me k squared is equal to 9, or k squared is equal to minus 4. Now, <clears throat> if you look at this here, k squared equal to minus 4, well, you can't square any number to give you minus 4, so this is not going to work. So our k squared is equal to 9, that'll give us k is equal to plus or minus 3. So let's work through those. Uh, let's take k is equal to plus 3 first. And let's take this equation here to work out what a is. Well, we have 6 over k is equal to a. That'll give me 6 over 3 is equal to a. That'll give me a is equal to 2. So when k is 3, a is 2. Let's take k is equal to minus 3. k is equal to minus 3. That'll give me 6 over minus 3 is equal to a. That'll give me a is equal to minus 2. So when k is minus 3, a is minus 2. So that will give me, if you look back up here, we want it to look like this. We want the square root of minus 5 plus 12i to look like a plus ki. So we have now a and k. So let me just write down uh, the answer here. So our, our answers then are 2 plus 3i and we also have minus 2 minus 3i as our two possible answers here. Yeah, give both of your answers in the form a plus bi. So we have our two answers down here. Okay, so let's have a look at part C. It says use the Morales theorem to find the three roots of z cubed is equal to minus 8. Give each of your answers in the form a plus bi. a and b are real and i squared is minus 1. Now we have to use the Morales theorem to find the three roots of z cubed is equal to minus 8. Give each of your answers in the form a plus bi where a and b are real and i squared is minus 1. So we're starting with uh, z cubed is equal to minus 8 plus 0i. So if we have a look at that on our complex plane, minus 8 plus 0i is going to be out here somewhere. We go out the real axis 8 units and we don't go up the imaginary axis at all, so it's 0i. Uh, now our argument here is just simply going to be pi 
and our modulus is going to be 8 units. We are 8 units in this direction here, 8 units from the origin. So let me just write that down. So our argument, our argument is just going to be pi and our OR is going to be 8 units. So rewriting this in uh, polar form, got Z cubed is going to be equal to OR, which is 8 times uh, cos pi plus I sine pi. Now what I've got to do here is get the uh, cubed root of both sides and what I'm actually going to do here is write this in general polar form as well. So get the cubed root of the left hand side, that'll give us our Z and we've got to take um, our 8 cos pi plus 2n pi plus i sine pi plus 2n pi. Got to raise all that to the power of a third. Now first thing we've got to do is get the cubed root of 8, uh, raise 8 to the power of a third, so that's just going to be 2. Now we've got our cos. What you do here using the Moss theorem is take the third, bring it down here, take the third, bring it down here, multiply. So we end up with pi over 3 plus 2 over 3n pi plus i sine pi over 3 plus 2 over 3n pi here as well. Okay, so this is where we're going to start. This is our Z here. Now what we're going to do is start with um, letting n equal to 0. So let's do that. Okay, so if we let n equal to 0 here it means this is just going to become 0 and this is going to become 0 here. So we are just going to find our first root here, Z1. That's going to be equal to 2 times cos pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. So that's going to be equal to, uh, let's see, the cos of pi over 3 is just a half, so we end up here with half plus i times sine of root 3, uh, sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So that'll give us our first solution here, 1 plus i times root 3. Okay, so this is our first answer here, 1 plus i root 3. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is look at n is equal to 1. So we're going to put 1 in here instead of n, 1 in here instead of n. So that'll give us our z2. So that'll give us twice cos pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. Now if we just simplify that, that'll give us 2 times, uh, here we have pi over 3, 1 pi over 3, here we've got 2 pi over 3, so that's just 3 pi over 3, so that's just the cos of pi plus i sine pi here as well. Okay, now the cos of pi, the cos of pi is minus 1. That'll give us 2 times minus 1 plus uh, the sine of pi is just going to be 0, so it's i times 0 here. And that finally will just give us minus 2 plus 0i. So I'll just leave it in that format. So we, this time we have n is equal to 2. Now remember we started with our z is equal to, I'll just write it out again here, we have z is equal to 2 times the cos of pi over 3 plus 2 over 3 n pi plus i sine, just put another bracket here, I sine pi over 3 plus 2 over 3 n pi. We, we're looking now for our z3, our third root here. So 
we've got to put 2 in here and 2 in here. So that will give us, let's see, 2 times uh, the cos of pi over 3 plus 2 2 is 4 over 3 pi plus i sine pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3. Let me just simplify all of that. So that will give us here the cos of pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3. That's 5 pi over 3. plus i sine 5 pi over 3. Let's work that out. Now the cos of 5 pi over 3, how are we going to work that out in the sine? So if we have a look at our, let's have a look at our uh, argon diagram here. We want 5 pi over 3. That's almost 6 pi over 3, which would be 2 pi. And remember, 2 pi is all the way around here. Our angle is going to be down here. So that's going to be 5 pi over 3. So our reference angle here is just pi over 3 here. This is our reference angle. This is 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3. So what we've got to do is find the sine and cos of pi over 3, first of all, and then just look at the sines. So the um, cos of pi over 3 is a half. And remember, we're in the fourth quadrant. So cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. So that's simply just going to be a half there. The cos of 5 pi over 3 is the same as the cos of pi over 3. Now the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Sine of The sine of 5 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. We're in the fourth quadrant, so it's going to be minus root 3 over 2. Okay, let's just simplify this. So that'll give us 1 uh, minus root 3i. 1 minus root 3i, which is actually the conjugate of the very first um, root that we found. So that's our third answer there. And that's the end of question 1.